What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about gaining muscle and a calorie deficit. Is it possible? But first, like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm. One of the questions I'll get very, very often is, can I gain muscle and lose fat at the same time? Stated a little bit more technically, can I gain muscle in a calorie deficit? And the answer is maybe. This is a very complicated topic, but there are research studies demonstrating that people do what's called recomping, which is where they lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. So why would anybody ever bother with gaining phases or fat loss phases? Let's just recomp all the time, all day, every day. Well, there's a few problems with that. The first one is there's really only three different populations that can lose significant amounts of fat while also gaining significant amounts of muscle. The first one is people who are new to weight training or are coming back after an extended layoff. So when you're new to weight training, you're coming back after an extended layoff, there is such a powerful need to synthesize muscle protein that if you're not consuming enough calories, your body will start to essentially rob energy from one area to support the energy required in another area. So in this case, there's so much tissue being synthesized in skeletal muscle, you have to liberate energy from fat tissue in order to support that process especially if you're in a calorie deficit. Why does this not continue to happen? Well, as you gain more muscle over time, it becomes harder and harder to gain more muscle. And so your synthetic requirements are reduced and you just don't require as much energy to support that process anymore. And so you're not liberating as much energy to support that process. As you progress in your lifting journey, your ability to recomp is going to become more and more difficult. That doesn't mean you can't do it, it just means it's gonna become more and more difficult and the fat loss and muscle gain is gonna be slower in both directions. Next type of population, people who are overweight or obese. If you're overweight or obese, your body's not gonna sense a calorie deficit the same way because you have so much stored endogenous supply of energy that you can probably still be in a calorie deficit and gain some muscle as an overweight or obese person. And then the third population are people on anabolic steroids or performance enhancing drugs. And then actually the fourth population would be any combination of one through three. Those are kind of the main populations where you can see significant gains in muscle with also significant losses of body fat. Sure, you can find studies in advanced trainers where they technically recomp, but it's like, you know, they lose half a kilo of fat and gain half a kilo of lean mass over like a 16 week period. So it's, it's not a big, big difference. And we have a new meta regression out which actually demonstrated that a calorie deficit does impair the ability to gain lean mass. So that's not saying that you can't gain lean mass in a calorie deficit, you can. You're just not going to build as much lean mass in a calorie deficit as you would if you were in a calorie surplus. Now, I'm a big fan of not chasing two rabbits at the same time. When I started in bodybuilding, I was 17 years old. And for the first year, I ended up spinning my wheels because I would start a gaining phase, then after a few weeks, feel really uncomfortable and then start a cutting phase and then feel really skinny and start a gaining phase and then feel really fat and start a cutting phase. And that process repeated itself over and over. It was not until I focused on one goal, committed to one goal and then would do that gaining phase for an extended period of time and then do a cutting phase to clean things up, then I started experiencing results. I think if you try to chase two rabbits, you're much more likely to catch none. So what I recommend people is to try to focus on one thing at a time. Yes, if you're one of those three populations I talked about, you can do a recomp, it's fine. But over time, as you become more advanced, it's gonna become more and more difficult to do significant recomp. One of the things I'll say is I started bodybuilding I was about 145 pounds and about 8% body fat on calipers. Now I'm about 9% body fat on calipers and about 210 pounds. Does anyone out there think I could have just recomped my way here? I certainly don't think so. Uh, it took extended phases of gaining focused calorie surplus in order to achieve this. In fact, I would estimate out of the last 20 years of my resistance training, 80 to 90% of that has been spent in a calorie surplus or at least at maintenance. So really, if you want to gain muscle, if you want to maximize your muscle building capacity, doing it 
in a slight caloric surplus is probably your best bet. Now, how big of a surplus? Well, if you're new to training, you can probably get away with a bigger surplus because you are gonna be pulling so much energy to support muscle protein synthesis. So maybe like a 15 to 20% surplus above your maintenance. So if you're at 3000 calories per day as a maintenance, you'll be up around 34, 35, 3600 calories per day. Now, if you're advanced, you're gonna build muscle much more slowly. You don't need that big of a surplus to support that. So I would recommend five to 10% surplus as a rough guideline. Everyone's different and everybody has different trade-offs they're willing to accept. So that's something to think about. In the latest issue of Reps, we actually talk about this and discuss a recent study looking at trying to build muscle in a calorie deficit versus in a surplus. So you guys, if you have not checked out Reps yet, it is our monthly research review where we break down five studies every month that are popular in nutrition and exercise. And we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy to understand without a bunch of scientific jargon. So we're doing the bulk of the heavy lifting for you guys. We are finding the studies we think you'll be interested in rather than you having to sit down at PubMed and search out millions of studies. And we are translating them into plain language so that you can understand what the researchers did, how they conducted the study, what they found, and whether or not we actually agree with the researchers' conclusions. I highly recommend reps. It's gonna educate you. You're gonna feel way more confident in your knowledge. And if you're a coach, you absolutely need to subscribe to reps because it's gonna help you communicate about the latest research studies with your clients and they are gonna ask you guys about this stuff because they're gonna see it in the news. So I highly recommend subscribing to reps. Click the link in the description and I'll catch you guys next week.